Welcome to developing research projects for your online classes. This is just a recording of a workshop we've done recently. My name is Natalie Haber and I'm part of the research and instruction team and I'm joined with... I'm Dunstan McNutt, also in research and instruction. And I'm Katie Gaughan in collection services. So if you have any questions about this workshop or any other things going on with your online classes, feel free to email the library at library at utc.edu. Um, we'll put that up on the screen as well. So the agenda for this workshop is pretty basic. We've already introduced ourselves, so we'll check that off. Um, we're gonna discuss research papers versus maybe some alternative projects you might consider for online um, classes. We'll look at types of online library instruction, including course pages that we can create, standalone tutorials that we'd be happy to create, or live synchronous research instruction. Um, we'll also make a quick pitch for our research consultations and discuss incorporating library collections as you um, decide upon what um, assignment you want to make. So jumping right in, I'll turn it over to Dunstan. All right, so depending on what the outcomes for your class are, there might be different options outside of the traditional research paper. And we often have conversations with faculty about what they're trying to get their students to take away from a class and the best way to meet those goals. So there are different components of the research process. Maybe you're more interested in your students finding particular kinds of information. Maybe you want them to be thinking more about the evaluation process and how to assess the quality of different sources of information. Or maybe you're more interested in that aspect of the research paper that is synthesizing the information and presenting it in a coherent way. And so matching up the types of alternatives that might meet those goals could look a lot of different ways. Uh, for example, the finding information piece might be met by just doing a research proposal rather than the actual paper where a student might include a literature review and a proposed methodology, but not actually put that methodology into practice, or just finding, creating a bibliography that's annotated, summarizing different kinds of sources. Annotated bibliographies are also really good for evaluating information. So if your prompt provides some instructions on how to go about evaluating the different sources, that can be part of those annotations. As far as different ways of synthesizing information, you might have students uh, individually or in groups create online presentations of different types and record those to post in Canvas or elsewhere. You might have them create podcasts that summarize their findings from their research. Um, and the, the main idea here is there are just different ways that students can engage with the library resources and different kinds of research practices. And we're just really open to having conversations about what you want your students to get out of your class and, and how we might help facilitate that. So I was gonna talk a little bit about course pages. So this is something that the librarians can collaborate to create um, sp that we can highlight specific library resources and research tips um, in a web page for your students. And so we've got several examples of that. I'll link out to it right now. So these are the ones we've created that are kind of constantly published, meaning that you know we're, we're consistently teaching these research methods classes. So if I take a look at the Psych 2020 research methodology, um, this was built in conjunction with the faculty member um, that day and or of the course that semester and so um, that professor wanted to make sure that the students knew her definition of a literature review so that was put right up at the top we also put videos for peer review and how to do a literature review what's the anatomy of a scholarly article um, we created lots of information boxes um, about where to search how to choose the best keywords using sage research methods um, and so on. And so these are really customizable. I'll show one more example. I'm gonna just hit back to the other guides. Um, here's the HHP one. So this is for health and human performance. So a lot of similar uh, boxes here, um, but it's you know mostly created on, on top of video references. So those are some options for course pages. I'm gonna come back over. 
let's see. I wonder how I can get this to go full screen again. There we go. Um, the other thing that we can do to support um, library research instruction with your students would be standalone tutorials. So we can do interactive library tutorials that have a quiz that runs alongside that you can assign for credit. Um, in the courses that I've done this with, we also, um, I'll, I grade also. So it could either be um, just for completion credit and I could just send you a list of students or you could say, hey, I want that worth 15 points and I can go through and grade it on whatever point scale you've come up with. Um, so we can actually, and I do think when a library um, module holds a grade, it's um, completed a little bit better by the students. They take it more seriously. Um, so here's just a, a basic um, English 1010 library instruction module that I created. You can see there's a place for the UTCID. I'm just going to kind of put in dummy information so you can see a couple of these slides here. I do ask what topic they're planning on researching. Um, and sometimes if the topic is a little off base, I might give the professor a heads up about that. So they watch a video that we created in-house about the differences between library, and library databases and Google. They've got a simple quiz along the side. Um, some other things, uh, and I won't go through the whole tutorial um, right now, but um, I've got a page about keywords, and then they have a chance to generate keywords for their topic, um, and then how to use the library's quick search in a short video. So um, these are really interactive, and students seem to have a good response to um, these tutorials. So we could create one of those with content we've already made or do something brand new for your course. So one thing that we've experimented with a little bit this semester as classes moved online was providing some synchronous options as well. So we can have course guides, we can have tutorials, but we can also meet with your class as a part of the regular class time. One class that I worked with this semester, we distributed a brief questionnaire a few days before the class so students had an idea of the kinds of things that we would be discussing whether it's general research problems, like um, as Natalie was mentioning, developing keywords and searching in databases or uh, developing their bibliographies or really specific things like I found this citation, but I'm having trouble tracking down the original source. And basically providing a Zoom platform uh, to have a, a live class and answer questions as they come up uh, with a little bit of guided discussion. In support of that, we can also have research consultations with students. These could be one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so we have forums on the library website to schedule research appointments. We could have group consultations if students are working in groups, but basically the students can either reach out to an individual librarian or go through a form and then we can find a time to meet to discuss their uh, individual research projects. So not only do we have the asynchronous options, but we're still still available to meet one-on-one -on -one or in groups, whatever meets the, the needs of your class. Yeah, and I might chime in with, um, in the past, we've had really good success having students be required to have research consultations with a librarian, but we really want to know about that upfront um, so that we can plan accordingly and get your students in that way. Um, if it's not possible to do a live synchronous session with the whole group. So it, it is possible, but um, if you're going to require it for a grade, let us know ahead of time so we can get it arranged properly. So um, just remember that the library has a variety of resources to meet your course needs um, and the research needs of your students. And so, you know, a lot of people think about libraries and they think about books and now think about ebooks, but we also offer streaming film, case studies, images, primary source materials, and we can hook you up with our librarians and archivists up in special collections. Um, we're also happy to work directly with you um, and your liaison library librarian to um, get you resources that you might not find that we don't have. We're always happy to look into options. Um, 
sometimes things are very expensive as well, but we try to provide access in any way that we possibly can to materials. So do know that as you work um, on new courses or moving courses online and you're going through reading lists and that sort of thing, to keep us in mind and keep in mind the things that we have available. And if you don't find it, we're happy to um, do some legwork with you to find the materials that you need. Um, and on that note, one of the initiatives that's run out of the library is the Affordable Course Materials Initiative. This initiative is run out of our Special Collections Unit um, by our Scholarly Communications Librarian, Rachel Fleming. Um, and this uh, initiative um, helps faculty members transition from high cost required and supplemental course materials to lower cost or um, open access um, materials. And so with that initiative, we help you go through your uh, syllabus for your course or to help you design um, a new course so that the materials don't cost your students a lot of money. And that can be anything from purchasing um, materials that are available through a library license and open for everybody to use um, in an unlimited way, or um, helping you find an open educational resource that you can use and or adapt. Um, there is a stipend that goes along with this work. Um, so you, you get something out of it as well. Um, and so right now the Affordable Course Mat Materials Initiative application is due on the 15th of May, which is soon, but don't let that deter you. We're happy to work with you throughout the year at any point to find what you need. Um, and also it, it's possible to qualify for that uh, after the date as well. And as Natalie mentioned, um, just sending a note to library at utc.edu, um, we can answer any and all questions about this stuff. Yeah, so we just want to thank you for attending uh, virtually as it may be. And um, again, we're hoping this is a conversation starter. So if you're still kind of working through how to move your classes online and, and just want somebody to bounce some ideas off of your liaison librarian and folks in research and instruction and throughout the uh, library and collections and elsewhere are happy to have those conversations. And if you don't know where to start, just email library at utc.edu and we will get that message to the right person.